Recently, we covered the harrowing events of Resident Evil 1, zombie dogs were loose in the forest, people were falling victim to cannibal attacks, and when the STARS team tried to get to the bottom of what was happening, a traitor from within their ranks sabotaged and set them up to fail. If you missed out on that video, I'll have it linked in the description. What happened leading up to the mansion incident in Resident Evil 1, though? Can you believe we have nearly 80 years of history to cover? The mansion incident was almost a century in the making, which makes it seem like it should have been all the more avoidable. Umbrella Corporation itself was founded in the 1950s, meaning they had nearly 50 years of experience under their belt before the T-Virus overcame the Arkley Laboratory. It really puts into perspective what an irresponsible tragedy Raccoon City being overrun by zombies really was. Welcome back! If you're new here, my name is Luffy and welcome to my channel. I talk video games and character analysis, so if that's your thing, subscribe and stick around. If you like what I do here, consider supporting me on Patreon or becoming a channel member so that I can continue to bring these videos to you weekly. Special thanks to Hachima Husband for suggesting this topic on YouTube. We have a lot to cover today, so let's dive into things. If there's anything you'd like me to zoom in on and cover in greater detail, let me know in the comments. 1919, an unacceptable loss. The Spanish flu swept across Eastern Europe and claimed Miranda's daughter's life in 1919. Devastated by the loss, Miranda refused to accept it and searched high and low for any way to get her daughter back. She finds an answer in the mold, a fungus that mutates most of those it comes in contact with into monsters. Some people die from being exposed to the mold, and others may be able to keep their human form. The mold infects Miranda and preserves her and gives her sick powers like the power to transform into an old lady or have ten wings. The mold can also preserve a person's consciousness even after their body has been destroyed. Miranda felt that if she could just get her hands on an appropriate vessel for her daughter to occupy, she could use the mold to revive her. She threw herself into researching the mold for the next century and used nearby villagers as guinea pigs in her experiments. Messed up. Now, you may be wondering, what does this have to do with Umbrella and Resident Evil 1? We'll get to that next. 1950s, the birth of Umbrella. Fast forward 30 years and Mother Miranda meets up with Oswell E. Spencer. Spencer was interested in finding a way to push people into the next stage of evolution slash becoming a god, so Miranda's experiments drew his attention as the mold could seemingly be that catalyst. Miranda openly discussed her experiments with him, though the two split from one another when it was clear they had different goals and that neither of them were willing to spend any energy on the other's goal. Spencer went on to discover the progenitor virus in West Africa and to found the Umbrella Corporation, where he'd act as Umbrella's CEO and president. 1960s, Spencer chases his ambitions. Spencer launched Project W and Project Code Veronica. Project W, also known as the Wesker Plan, was intended to create the next step in evolution Spencer sought after. Our boy Albert Wesker came from this project, so I guess Spencer was good for something. Project Code Veronica was headed by Dr. Alexander Ashford. His goal was to create a greater human being, but so that that person can carry on the Ashford name as its successor. The project resulted in Alexia and Alfred Ashford, and I love Alfred, so this project was a success in my book. <laughs> 1970s, Dr. Marcus is betrayed. Dr. James Marcus is a co-founder of Umbrella and a virologist who took the progenitor virus Spencer found and combined it with leech DNA to create the T-Virus. The ball is steadily starting to pick up speed and power like a snowball rolling down a hill. The T-Virus, as we know, will go on to destroy Raccoon City. Unfortunately, Spencer betrayed Marcus and handed all his research over to Albert Wesker and William Birkin. Wesker and Birkin took Marcus's research to the Arclay Mountain Laboratory where they continued it. 1980s, the T. Veronica virus. Alexia Ashford creates the T. Veronica virus and uses this virus on herself and her dad. Her dad mutates into a monster, sucks to be him, but Alexia falls into a deep cryo sleep. The 80s are also when Birkin digs down into his work and discovers the G virus. The G virus then takes the majority of his focus. 1990s, the connections. Brandon Bailey, Dr. Marcus's protege, founded The Connections, which is a crime syndicate. The Connections contacted Miranda about her moldy experiments with the hope of gaining some samples from her. They wanted to weaponize the mold to make bioweapons that could be sold on the black market. Eventually, The Connections' work would go on to create Miranda's spiritual granddaughter. It's really too bad that Miranda's granddaughter, Evelyn, and Miranda never really latched onto each other. Both of them are looking for family and really could have found that family in each other. 1998, the first rumblings of what was to come. Unfortunately, Marcus's continued work on the T-Virus doesn't go unnoticed and Wesker kills him for his efforts. Marcus's body merges with the Queen Leech to become the Zombie Queen. With his second lease on life, Leech on life? 
Marcus vows revenge against Umbrella for stealing his life's work and for murdering him in cold blood. He slaps a train nearby the Arclay Laboratory with leeches and kills everyone on board. As we know from Resident Evil 1, the STARS team was sent into the Arclay Forest to figure out why hikers were disappearing. There's a story about cannibal attacks circulated by the media and the STARS team are going to get to the bottom of it. While searching the forest, STARS team member Rebecca finds a wrecked transport truck. The truck had been transporting Billy Cohen, who was suspected of killing as many as 23 people. Could Billy be behind the attacks they heard about? Obviously not. The transport truck is slimy and it looks like it had been caught up in Marcus's liege attack. Rebecca goes on to find the train and searches it for Billy and finds him. The two end up agreeing to work together to escape the nightmare on the train. They eventually get the train working to get out of the monster-infested forest, but the train unfortunately runs out of control and crashes into a nearby Umbrella training facility. The two successfully navigate the facility and escape and Rebecca doesn't arrest Billy and instead lets him go. Billy walks away to live a beautiful life free of the law and zombies and definitely doesn't just get eaten by zombie dogs in the forest off screen. Rebecca goes into the Spencer Mansion to meet up with the surviving stars members, which takes us to the events of Resident Evil 1. So much happens leading up to the mansion incident in Resident Evil 1. I was shocked to remember just how far back we have to go to get to the start of the timeline with the additions RE8 made. Your thoughts. There's a really interesting argument I've seen online. Some fans of Resident Evil really hate RE7 and RE8 and say that the mold fundamentally changes Resident Evil's lore. To oversimplify the argument, I've seen it argued that the mold changes Resident Evil from being about the evil and greed of big corporations to a story about a mother trying to resurrect her daughter. This upset people because they felt that the original message was bigger and more meaningful than the new message. I was curious to know what y'all thought about this and if you thought the mold added to Ari's lore or changed it for the worse. So we took a poll here on YouTube. The majority of you voted the mold added to Ari's lore, which I straight up was so relieved to see. When I heard about the discourse online, I was so worried people actually hated Ari 7 and 8 and the mold, because I actually really love the mold myself. Though I'm totally biased because it's really Ethan, Mia, and Rose that I love. Tina Hare 3856 had a lot of really great things to add. I wanted to highlight this section of their comment though. I think that it freshens up the story. The new threat being fungus-based gives more variety to the series and allows the devs to do more things. Like how Nemesis in 3 introduced parasites into the lore, allowing a new type of infection to make different threats than the mindless creatures of the previous viruses. The mold is just the new version of that narrative element. And I super agree. I feel like we've really hit a dead end with the T-Virus. In pretty much every Resident Evil movie, the zombies have lost their scare factor as devs and directors try to make the zombies a greater threat by having them turn faster, run after their prey, and get these weirdo tentacle mouths. With each new iteration, the T-Virus gets less scary and more predictable. The mold really does freshen up the story, like Tina Hare said. I'm really excited to see where they take the mold next. Already in Shadows of Rose, they turned the mold into something incredibly creative and terrifying. Telesto the besto, I love that your username rhymes, commented, I don't mind it. I just wish it was unconnected to Umbrella. It being connected to Umbrella doesn't have any story significance beyond the Four Lords imagery in one note. And sometimes I feel like Miranda knowing Spencer is the RE writers regretting they killed off Spencer unceremoniously. So they gave us the actual big bad. I'd never thought about whether or not the writers regretted killing Spencer off. Maybe they would have liked to do something with Spencer like they did with Marcus, transform him into a magnificent zombie boss to terrorize us. I also think them connecting Miranda to Spencer was a little forced. I was definitely the pointing meme when I first read the note, which was a real treat, but now that I've had some time to sit back and think about it, they really didn't need to be connected. Though it does make me wonder if we'll ever get a game set in the 1950s that covers Spencer and Miranda's partnership. How cool would that be? An RE game set in the 50s? Liquid Pro Eaten 1367 commented, TBH, I'm a little torn. While I don't think every RE villain necessarily needs to be about the evils of capitalism or a crazy eugenicist, Miranda is really basic in comparison. And that's very true. Miranda is one of the more basic villains, though I really kind of love her for that. I feel a lot more for Miranda than for Marcus. Miranda is just a heartbroken mother sacrificing literally anything to get her daughter back. I'd say she's probably Resident Evil's most sympathetic villain in a series that doesn't usually give you much to sympathize with, villain-wise. Well, that concludes our quick and dirty summary of everything that happened leading up to Resident Evil 1. If there's anything you'd like to see me zoom in on and cover in greater detail, let me know in the comments. Umbrella's history is full of people trying to either force the evolution of people to make stronger, faster, all-around more capable humans, or trying to become godlike themselves. Miranda is the one exception to this, as she just wants to resurrect her daughter. You'd think with the 50 years of research under their belt, Umbrella would understand how deadly and capable these viruses are and have better security protocols in place in case of a virus leaking out. But I guess we wouldn't have the Resident Evil series if they did. Who's your favorite Resident Evil mad scientist? Do you find yourself rooting for any of them? 
Does Miranda deserve to get her daughter back? Or does Wesker have the right to be as souped up as he is? Thank you so, so much for making it to the end of today's video. If you liked it, share it with someone who wants to know more about Resident Evil lore. If you need more content, check out my Patreon. I upload articles I write on upcoming videos or just thought pieces on video games in general. You can support me in the channel by becoming a channel member or join us in Discord. We're always talking about MGS. More importantly than that though, please take care of yourself and I'll catch you on the next one. Thank you. Ha, 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 ha.